In the workshop, this episode is called Painting the Boxford Lathe Part 1, although it should say Painting the Boxford Lathe Part 1 and a half, as I commenced the painting in the last episode. I received a comment from a viewer fairly immediately, and here is the comment. I don't know much about technical language for lathes, and I didn't know they were called oil daubers. I just thought they were oiling points. In my opinion, it's much better to paint over them. This is only the first coat, by the way. But for this viewer, I'm showing what I'm going to do when it's finished. All I've done is scraped off the paint where the oiling point is. And I will, of course, be doing this on every one of the oiling points, so please don't worry. There are far worse things going on in the world at the moment. This clip shows the start of the second coat, and you will notice that I'm getting paint all over the part that I don't want to be painted, but it's not an issue, you just wipe it off. But I don't do it as I'm going, I'm only doing this so I don't get any more comments. If I scrape off the bits of paint as I go along, then the bits of paint that I scrape off will go onto the new paint if you get my drift. And besides, some of the paint that is on the cast iron parts was the original paint, not my doing. When the paint is wet, it's very easy to wipe it off the cast iron parts, but I generally wait until it's dried and use some solvent to dissolve the paint. That way, I get a cleaner line. By the way, I really must mention that I am not a painter. I do not like painting. But I thought that this Boxford lathe would look so bad in the workshop once the floor was painted, by my friend Rob. And that's why I decided to paint it. It should be grey. I tried it in grey and it looked horrendous. This paint is called Ash Grey, so I suppose it's still some kind of a grey, and it's from a company called Paragon Paints, and a kind viewer pointed out that they're only five miles from where I live. But unfortunately, they state on the website that it is mail order only, so it's not an issue, it's just interesting that they're just down the road. This week is proving to be quite difficult. When I was in the workshop yesterday, the floor paint was nowhere near dry, so I was sticking to the floor, which was not good. I repainted the part of the floor that I made a mess of. Then I switched on the fan on the air conditioning unit and left that on overnight. And that seems to have helped to dry the paint. It's a lot better this morning. Considering how bad this lathe was and the fact that I seldom clean out the chip tray, my friend Rob made a really good job of cleaning it. I'm not picking up many bits at all. He even went into all of the corners. In this clip I'm painting quite a fiddly bit and once again I'm painting over the oiler. I will wait until the paint is fully dry before I scrape it off. And I've also painted part of the lead screw, some of it by accident and some of it on purpose. I will remove all paint from the lead screw once the paint is dry. Painting the bed is fairly tricky and I keep getting paint on the lead screw. I can't help but wipe it off. I shouldn't do really, I should just leave it but it's almost a reflex action. I'm using a flat brush, so it's quite easy to get behind the lead screw, and it's only my incompetence that makes it that I get paint on the lead screw. I'm very impressed with this paint. There's plenty of pigment in it, and it's quite easy to paint over other colours. Some areas of the lathe will have two coats, and some other areas will be left with one. I'm going to remove all of the paint from the edge of the slides, in this clip, I'm showing you how I intend to use a brush to wipe the lead screw to get rid of all the paint. But once again, I will do this properly once the paint is dry, because I don't want to eject particles from the lead screw onto the painted area. Strangely enough, painting this part of the lathe, the support columns for the bed, seem to be quite satisfying in a painting kind of way. I have a bit of a problem with the colour of paint when I'm actually painting. It always goes on lighter than it dries. This paint, for instance, looks white. And well, I suppose it is white. It's a very, very pale grey. But to my eye, at the moment, it looks too white. Another thing, this is semi-gloss paint. It's looking very glossy because it's wet, but it dries in an eggshell finish and a bit darker, so it should look OK. Time to paint the headstock. I've already painted this once with grey paint and it looks so bad I really couldn't live with it. Hopefully this time it should turn out better. You will notice I'm getting some paint on the badgers and I'm really not worried about this. It's far easier just to paint the part you want to paint. If you get any paint on the badgers, just wipe it off. 
Maybe not the way professionals do it, but I am not a professional painter. I've slackened off the lubricators, I don't want to paint over these. I paint around them. The headstock is going to need another coat. This is when I'd nearly completed it, well the side of it anyway. Time now to paint the chip tray, and this is very easy to do, because you can put the paint on, and it doesn't run, and it looks alright. I haven't forgotten the front of the headstock, and here I'm putting the first coat of paint in this area. Any parts that will get quite a lot of contact from me need another coat, and I'll probably re-coat the chip tray as well. Here's the first coat going on. I'm enjoying using this paint, it really is good quality stuff. Slowly but surely, as I apply the paint, the lathe is definitely starting to look a bit better. I'm going to paint the front of the cabinet as well, but the doors and the contactor boxes are going to be painted grey. I always paint in a way that I describe as on the drip. I apply sufficient paint, but not too much to make the paint run. I've seen some people painting things and they apply the paint and then they scrub and scrub and scrub which almost removes it again and doesn't look good at all. When I finish this job it will not win Lathe of the Year painting competition, but it will look a lot better than it did. And that's it for this video, I'd like to say as always stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.